This is great. And it's the par those paragraphs that I'm getting mixed up. So it's hilarious what I'm doing. I'm like, whoa, wrong talk. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to see God's light in everything? To see his glory? To say with St. Therese of Lisieux, I can no longer suffer because all suffering is sweet? Therese ended her earthly life in utter darkness, interior darkness, and with excruciating physical suffering. But she meant what she said, because she had night vision. She could see in the dark. Some of the cutest animals God made are ones that see in the dark, because they have these big bug eyes. This Australian sugar glider is one of them. It has a very large lens close to the retina that permits tons of light to register on the retina. It also has this mirror-like layer behind the retina called the tapetum that makes the most of any amount of light. Being very little, his night vision helps him find food, insects, and protects him from predators. Jesus, when he rose from the dead, gave us all night vision. Look at the disciples on the road to Emmaus. They were sad. They thought that their rescuer, their friend, had died. But joy erupts when they recognize the risen Lord in the breaking of the bread saying, did not our hearts burn within us when he opened to us the scriptures? Sadness is clearly a good place to start. If they'd been moseying along the road to Emmaus, totally indifferent, I think their day might have ended a lot differently. And Jesus is drawn to us in our need. But with Jesus, the end is never sadness. The end is always resurrection. It says that the disciples in Emmaus, they rose and returned to Jerusalem that same hour. The end is resurrection. At one point in my life, my vision changed. God in his mercy permitted a deep darkness, a deep sadness to come over me. I felt like darkness just descended over my whole being. When do we humans see the best, see the furthest? In the day. Now, look at the night. We see all the way to the stars. Being in darkness and despair taught me what matters, what is eternal, not passing. I started to live seeing eternity in everything and to live only for the salvation of souls. Now, in my humanity, I get distracted pretty quickly. I forget essentials really quickly. So I'm constantly begging the Lord to remind me of the darkness that he's rescued me from. Like John Corbon wrote, I was wounded by sin and radically incapable of loving. Now love has become part of my nature again. And having felt the hell, the emptiness that Jesus rescued me from by his sacrifice, I'm able to love so much more. The height of my thanksgiving is the same as the depths of the darkness was. This Easter vigil, I felt I was gonna like explode for joy when three girls who I've been preparing for two years received eternal life. I was so happy I couldn't sleep. I just kneeled in the chapel uh, till the wee hours of the morning thinking about all the people that received eternal life that night. I went through the Diocese of Edmonton, through Alberta, through Canada, and I just traveled through the world. I couldn't sleep. On the road to Emmaus, Jesus explains to the disciples, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer to enter his glory? Does Jesus sound bitter? Does he sound regretful? No, he sounds completely jubilant. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer? He's talking about himself. And with him, united to him, I can look at every day and just say, oh, firmly, was it not necessary that I should have suffered? So to enter into glory and also help others enter into glory. The night vision that Jesus gives us is his vision from the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The word forgive and liberate stems from the same Greek root. Jesus is calling out to his Father to liberate his crucifiers, to free them. The mission of the Christ and all Christians was never clearer than in that moment. With Jesus, united to Jesus on our daily journey, our lenses get bigger and bigger and bigger, much bigger than the sugar gliders. <laughs> they just keep getting bigger until we see the whole world, until we see every soul that still needs to be freed from slavery. We also receive the sugar gliders to pedum that makes the most of light. When Jesus opens to us the scriptures and 
pours himself into us in the sacraments, we are ready, we are disposed to receive all the light, all the grace that he is giving us. And then we radiate his light to the world. There is no reason why we haven't flooded the world with his light. There is, we receive so much light in the sacraments, but we're not disposed. We need to be united with him daily to be ready to receive the fullness of his light to give it. John 4 verse 1 says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Night vision is resurrection vision. Now, without Christ, we quickly have tunnel vision. We just mm, go into ourselves. That's misery. But joy is resurrection vision. To say, Jesus is risen, Jesus lives, and I live, and I will live forever. And I need everybody to know the good news, that they can live forever. As Pope Benedict wrote, not only do we have a right, we also have a duty to rejoice because the Lord has given us joy and the world is waiting for it. In 2016 at a Marian Vigil, Pope Francis entreats us, we cannot keep the gift of God's presence within us. On the contrary, we are called to share with everyone his love. It is the joy of sharing that stops at nothing. The resurrection vision of St. Therese gives her Mary's trust. She is free to focus on the needs of others. As she said, ever since I've forgotten myself, I have been completely happy. Christians, we must reach everyone in the world with this good news. As Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and have it abundantly.